Hey everyone, on this episode of the BrokerLink podcast, we're going to be talking about why you should add hospital indemnity to your portfolio. Whether you sell Medicare or other products, this can be a great addition to your product mix. Here we go. President Mike Smith, how are you doing today? I feel great. Good, good. It's good to have you back on the podcast. Uh, I know everybody really enjoyed hearing the brokerage story in the first little series we did. Um, pretty powerful stuff. Yeah, it was fun, wasn't it? Really good. Um, I, I just really enjoyed the dynamic of just seeing you and Cheryl and just reliving the years. Um, and I hope if you if you guys listened to that, um, it provided some context just about who this company is and what the company stands for. Um, I thought it was really revealing of that for sure. Um, so getting into the topic today, um, Mike, why don't we just start off with a basic question for those who may not know, what is hospital indemnity in a nutshell? A hospital indemnity plan, first of all, let's talk about indemnity means it's going to be something that's paid on top of other plans. So not in a reimbursement situation where it coordinates. So a hospital indemnity plan is actually going to pay benefits to someone so if I went into the hospital, I might be able to get a first occurrence benefit of, say, $1,000. That's just money straight off the top paid to me. It mm-hmm. could go to help things while I'm in the hospital, like pay for my house to be cleaned or have somebody watch my dogs. Uh, it'll also pay like a per day amount, so $200, $300, $400, depending on how much benefit I need. It can also pay things on an outpatient basis, too. So if I'm having an extended chemotherapy or perhaps even stay a skilled nursing facility stay, it could also pay things like emergency rooms, you know, or for the ambulance to get me to the emergency room. So a hospital indemnity plan does a whole lot more than just pay for hospital benefits. But basically after the end of the day, it's just going to pay on top of other plans. So it helps to reimburse people for their out-of-pockets. Very cool. So probably the question most agents are asking, and, and when we've put out promotional material about this, is why should I even consider selling this? Well, let me take that this and expand on the answer. When I, when I think in terms of why should people cross-sell supplemental health products, hospital indemnity fits into that mix, but so does a cancer plan, a heart attack, stroke, accident, critical illness. There's a lot of different types of indemnity plans that we can sell as a supplement to the existing health insurance package. And I think probably the top two reasons that I think of when I think in terms of cross-selling, at least from the client perspective, is that it builds client loyalty. So people become more endeared to you. That Mm -hmm. relationship is strengthened, of course. Uh, And not to mention the fact that it provides more of a comprehensive protection package. And we all know that the more products that you have in a household, the Mm -hmm. less likely that a person is to leave you. Right. So those are some of the key things that come to mind. But, you know, in specifics, when I look in terms of what what happens when a person goes into the hospital and incurs what we'll call a catastrophic claim, and they have to come out of pocket with a deductible or a coinsurance or copays as it might relate to a Medicare Advantage plan, I found out that 47% of the people that go into the hospital actually don't even have the money to meet the deductible. Mm. And this applies to people over 65 and under 65. Right. Another 42% of those who go into the hospital actually wipe out their entire savings. And that entire savings on the average is only about six or $7,000. So as a nation, we don't do a very good job of preparing for the unexpected. You know, it's always going to happen to somebody else. Um, Another 27% of those folks who went into the hospital, when they get out, they basically have to alter their lifestyle. They can no longer afford all the extra things that they may have done Mm -hmm. or the other necessities. They may have to make sacrifices along the way. Uh, 23% of them put completely everything on a credit card. Mm -hmm. So now they're credit card debt. Right. Really, does a $6,000 debt on a credit card really cost six thousand, but if you paid it off over a five or ten year period, you know you're ten, twelve thousand yep. dollars. So yep. a lot of things can happen, and unfortunately, seven percent of them file bankruptcy. So you know, for about mm. fifty bucks a month, really, yep. you can solve that problem. And the number one reason why agents don't sell this product, very common sense, they don't ask. Yep. They don't offer it, but yet. In my travels, when I talk to brokers that have had success with this product, I say, what is it that makes this work for you? Simple. I bring it up. I make it a part of my presentation. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to sit there. I'm going to talk about this Medicare Advantage plan or this bronze or silver ACA plan. 
I'm going to bring up hospital indemnity. And if they say no, that's okay. But I'm also going to bring up dental and vision and hearing and other mm-hmm. things. So the number one way to get started in selling supplemental health plans is to actually go back to your existing client base and ask. Yeah. And following up on that too, you know, you talked about client retention just because they have more product with you. Let's go to the flip side of that too. If I, you've sold me this plan and you told me it was going to offer financial protection in this Medicare Advantage plan, and I am one of these people, unfortunately, passes through and I have to go towards that max out of pocket and now I have to put it on my credit card, who am I going to be mad at? Mm-hmm. You. Broker. Why didn't you talk to me about this, right? Exactly. So if you don't, you're kind of doing them a disservice, I would say. Well, not only that, you kind of leave yourself vulnerable because there's a whole lot of other direct-to-consumer, you know, picking at that customer, mm-hmm. whether that's driving down the road looking at a billboard or getting a phone call from a call center. Yep. Somebody's always trying to take your client. Yep. And if I've got three or four products in that household, my relationship is pretty secure. That's right. If I just have one product, I'm one rate increase away from being fired. All right, Mike. So I'm an agent. You're starting to kind of get me hooked on this idea. Now let's start talking about practice. How do I start to work this into my sales process? What quote engines does the brokerage provide? Um, what does that part look like? Well, certainly it's a very easy process. Let me start by saying that because for people who may never have sold supplemental health insurance plans before, they may be a bit intimidated. Where do I begin? Simply go to thebrokerageinc.com. Mm-hmm. And right there, you log in and we have a number of free quote engines. And one of which, uh, when you click the button to get quotes for hospital indemnity, we'll open up our Simply Enroll platform, Simply Quotes, Simply, mm-hmm. simply Everything. Yeah. You just, you know, from dental to final expense, hospital indemnity, Medicare supplement plans, you can sit there and get multiple quotes within a few minutes. So it's it's free and mm-hmm. it's easy. Let me start by saying that. Now, we invest here at the brokerage a lot in technology, as you know. And the reason we do that is because we want it to be easy. We want to remove those excuses and take away the concerns of, oh, where do I get started? Yeah. So if I went online and I got a hospital indemnity quote, within a couple of minutes, I could line up either a person's existing Medicare Advantage plan, and then alongside that, I could actually build a quote that almost matches exactly what the out-of-pocket would be. So if a person has a $300 out-of-pocket on a Medicare Advantage, I can match that with a $300 copay for the hospital. Mm -hmm. If they have a $75 copay for ambulance, I could probably match it with a $75 copay with a hospital indemnity plan featuring an ambulance rider. In other words, it takes only a few minutes to get a quote. And then typically I can print out what amounts to only two to three pages and make the presentation. So for the most successful agents that sell hospital indemnity on a regular basis, that's how they do it. Mm -hmm. There's definitely a common thread to that level of success. And it's so simple to make the quote, and then they just make the presentation, and the, the presentation is CMS compliant, so mm-hmm. there's no intimidation there. And that as they go down the list of exposures in the Medicare Advantage plan, they show them, well, you know, for $5 a month, we can address this. Yep. And by the time they're finished, usually a quote will range in the 40 to $60 per month range. Mm-hmm. So a $50, so let's just use that. $50 is a very affordable. And when compared to someone who might be buying, say, a $125 Plan G Medicare supplement for $50 a month, I could get a $0 Medicare Advantage plan, and I save them you know, $60, $80 a month right there. And I give them almost as good of benefits and arguably even better because if I had that first occurrence benefit, like I mentioned a minute ago, I mm-hmm. go in the hospital and somebody scratches me a check for $1,000 that can pay for a whole lot of things that don't get reimbursed by a traditional Medicare plan. So it's very easy to get a quote. Just go to thebrokerageinc.com. Mm-hmm. For sure. And guys, uh, Mike actually did a demo of how to do that a little while back. Um, and so we'll, we'll make sure to add a link in the show notes um, where you can watch him go through that quote engine. And I, th- I believe you just went right through a Medicare Advantage plan. You clicked fill the gaps mm-hmm. and it pulled it right up. Yes, yeah, easy, easy to do. Mm-hmm. So the next question I'm probably going to have is, as many agents ask when it comes to these supplemental products, you know, is it worth my time? What does the commission look like? Uh, maybe speak to that a little bit. Well, it is easy to sell. And so the commissions are pretty attractive on top of that. 
I'd say normally you're going to get somewhere in about a 45 to 50 percent commission range from most carriers. And we have about eight different companies that offer different types of hospital indemnity and other supplemental plans. So getting contracted is quite simple. You get set up. Normally, you just pick one or two hospital indemnity plans, and they're going to do the job. So from an underwriting perspective, you may want to make some concessions there because some companies may have a higher commission, but they're going to have a little bit more stringent underwriting. And some companies that may have a bit more liberal underwriting may have a little, you know, maybe not so restrictive underwriting. You know, the higher the commission, the more restrictive Mm -hmm. the underwriting. But nonetheless, it's a profitable product for the insurance companies. And so just think in terms of 50% to make the math simple. And as I mentioned a minute ago, you know, $50 a month, $600 a year in premium, 50% of that's $300. And imagine if a person was out there, a typical agent that we have may make 50 sales to 100 sales in the annual enrollment period. If they added on a $300 sale, you know, for 20 sales, one fourth or mm-hmm. so of their sales, basically they're going to be adding another five or six thousand yep. dollars in one AEP, yep. just because they asked. And it's super easy to quote. Yep. It's super easy to enroll. I mean, the application is typically mostly a yes or a no. So you may have five to ten questions. If you can answer all of those questions, no, it's it's pretty much issued. If they have a couple of questions where they have to answer yes, it may be, do you take prescription drugs? And if so, there's certain things. Everybody takes a little hypertension or something along. It's not going to cause a decline. Mm -hmm. If they're taking something serious like Aricep, they got memory loss, probably going to be a decline. But bottom line is it's an easy product to qualify for. It's an easy product to quote and enroll. So why wouldn't an agent sell more hospital indemnity plans? Great, great point. Why would you not? I think that's the biggest question of all. It's kind of a no-brainer. Contracting's easy, quoting's easy, underwriting's easy. Mm -hmm. Make an extra 300 bucks on enrollment. Mm -hmm. Mostly in electronic application format. There's paper apps for people that want to use paper, but Mm -hmm. most of the companies are pretty proud of their electronic application. So, for example, I could go on, let's just say Aetna's website, I could literally quote something along the lines of, say, a plan G, and then I could turn right around and show them maybe a high deductible plan, say, plan K, and show them how by pairing that with a hospital indemnity plan, I might be able to provide them equal to or better benefits by combining those two products and be able to still save them money. And so for some clients that may come to us with, say, a health savings account that may have fifteen, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000 in it, and they say, well, I don't need first dollar coverage. Just give me that plan K. And the agent's like, well, I don't want to mess with that. I'm not going to make any money. Well, go out there and sell them a hospital indemnity or supplemental health insurance plan. Whatever you do, sell them something because otherwise they're going to take that business elsewhere. And then what else are you going to lose? A life insurance sale? chance to roll over a 401k. So there's all kind of conversations that can come about just by selling supplemental health in general. And this whole conversation really revolves around being a true independent broker. Yep. Not just an order taker, an enroller, being a true insurance broker, which is what this company is all about. Absolutely. So go out there, grab your fact finder, find out what products they have and what they don't have, and check the boxes. And it, think of the basic scope of appointment form. You know, obviously they have Medicare Advantage, Medicare Supplement, and prescription drug on there, but what else do they always have? Dental vision, mm-hmm. hearing, supplemental health, hospital and dimming. Usually those are the types of products that can be compliantly sold at the point where you're making a Medicare presentation. And for an agent not to go the extra mile and show all those different options, check all the boxes. It's just a given. Yep. Talk about the products and guess what? You're going to sell a few of them along the way. In the application process, check another box. It's included. Issue two policies at once, both mm-hmm. online. Get an electronic deposit by Friday. Why would you want to wait? Perfect. Perfect way to wrap it up there. You know, here at the brokerage, we do a lot of training. So we have a number of webinars and also live trainings that we provide our brokers. And then on top of that, we also offer top-level vested contracts to sell supplemental health insurance. This last AEP, we went one step further, and we identified hospital indemnity as an area of growth, which we had excellent sales, by the way. 
and we wanted to offer a bonus. It was paid straight out of our pocket, not yep. by the insurance company, but by the ins- by the brokerage to the broker for recognizing the importance of this type of sale. And we had a number of agents that not only qualified, but we're going to be writing some pretty nice sized checks. And I'm happy about that because now we've created a new habit. So what we wanted to do, to do was to ask those agents, what is it that you did different? How did you go about putting that product on the table? Mm-hmm. Something that you weren't sure about doing, now you're comfortable with it and you have a new habit. Yeah. So we were happy that we had a few agent testimonials that we'd like to share with our listeners here about what they did to make this work for them. So hi, everybody. I'm Stephanie Barnes. I am a Medicare agent uh, working here in the community. Um, when I provide information on the Medicare Advantage plan that they are interested in, um, oftentimes as I go through all of the benefits of the plan, I point out um, you know, the two most costly co-pays that are usually involved with Medicare Advantage, and that is the skilled nursing facility co-pay and the hospital co-pay. Um, when I get to that hospital copay, that's my opportunity to point out the hospital indemnity policy that GTL offers or any other carrier. Um, One of the things that I like about GTL is the guarantee issue. Um, So when I present that option to my clients, um, I like to always throw out there that if you are between the ages of 64 and a half and 65 and a half, um, you are guaranteed to get this product. Um, If you are not, then there are just a few simple health questions that we can go over to see if you do qualify for this this policy. Um, This policy reduces their cost. And that's what I explained to them. If you are looking for a way to reduce your cost with your Medicare Advantage plan, this is a great way. Um, And if you are in the ages of 64 and a half and 65 and a half, I encourage you to do it now because you have that opportunity to get it without underwriting questions. Um, So that is usually how I approach my clients. covering the information on Medicare Advantage, using that moment of the hospital copay to offer that product at the same time. Um, One of the important things to know when you are offering an additional product during your sell, you have to kind of get to know that client. Um, If you are, are in the middle of a conversation with them and you feel like it's not the right time, to offer that product because they're, they're, they're just not in the right mood or they, they don't have much interest in doing anything else at that time. It, you need to learn how to try to pick up on that. Um, if you don't feel that they are ready for that, then usually what I do is I, I don't present that option, but I go back to them. Um, I have created an email where I can follow back up with them, give them some time to just settle into the Medicare Advantage plan. And then I follow back up with them and say, hey, we didn't cover this in our meeting, but I want you to know about this because it's really important. Um, There is a plan that will help you reduce your cost. And because you're in that right age right now, you can get this with no underwriting questions. So I think it's important to try to always offer that um, as you're covering the benefits of the Medicare Advantage plan. If it's not the right time, then go back and do it later. Um, Oftentimes my clients add it and they keep it. Hi there, my name is Lee Green and I'm a licensed independent uh, Medicare insurance agent here in Texas, uh, based in Austin, um, going into my fifth year and uh, probably have a little over a thousand clients. um, And believe me, um, it took me a little while to uh, start selling ancillary products, but once I figured it out, I bring it up on every call. In my block of business, half of my block is MedSup and half of it's Medicare Advantage. So with my Medicare Advantage members who all have a inpatient copay of approximately $300 a day, give or take 75 bucks for days one through six, I always bring up the guarantee trust life Perhaps I'm not supposed to talk about a carrier, but I bring up uh, um, a particular carrier. Well, I know Aetna also has the same type of product. Um, so does, you know, other carriers as well. I think Cigna. And just basically I say, you know, for an additional 20 or 25 or 30 bucks a month, you can have that entire inpatient stay covered 
where they'll write you a check for say $1,900. And if you're out of the hospital for 60 days, they'll write you another check for $1,900. Um, and it costs you 30 bucks a month, almost a no brainer. So know your market for Medicare Advantage. I do the hospital reimbursement and the commissions are outstanding. I mean, yeah. um, with the hospital reimbursement or cancer, heart attack and stroke policies, they actually pay you a huge amount the first year, like 55, 60%, whatever your arrangement is with your FMO. Um, but, it, you know, it's a large amount. So if they're paying $35 a month for a hospital reimbursement policy, you know, that's $420 a year. And if you're getting half of that, you, you've just made an extra $210, $215 commission you know, choose a product with a certain company. Don't feel like you have to be an expert on all of them. And then read the brochure, have a comfort level, and then maybe write down a question, you know, have you considered dental or vision? How are you gonna cover dental or vision? Or, you know, with your drug plan, uh, you might have a significant out-of-pocket for oral cancer drugs. Or with a Medicare Advantage, let's talk about how we can cover your inpatient copay. And so that's a nice segue to these products. Well, that's great stuff. Super thankful for the chance to hear really what our agents are doing out in the field. And we know from a lot of you agents that have given us feedback, that's the stuff that you enjoy hearing the most. Who has done this successfully already? That way it's not just a concept. You're getting to hear how this is already impacting people's lives and how it could impact your business as well. Yeah, so Mike, thanks again for uh, joining us today. I hope this helped you guys. Just a quick little intro to this product and, and why you should be introducing it to your portfolio. Mike, do you want to just wrap it up in a statement? Once again, why should an agent be selling this? Client retention, increased income, simple quotes, simple enroll, no reason not to. Boom. I think that wraps it up, everybody. Uh, thanks for listening to this episode of the BrokerLink podcast. We will see you next time.